So you want to grow some strawberries, but you found out that straws are bad for the environment. That, that is wild, guys. Listen, if you're not using iron straws, what are you doing? Hey guys, I'm Matt Spike. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again, taking a look at how to make this uh, kind of motion graphic background animated kind of thing going on here. And I've seen this a lot in ads and like commercials and things of that nature. Um, so I figured it's uh, it's a good time to uh, to do it. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is click and drag a box over top of everything in our scene. That's right, everything in our scene. Hit delete, and then hit one on our numpad, and then hit uh, shift A and search for a camera. Now use your middle mouse button, click the scroll wheel in, and then just uh, pan around. Hit G Y on the keyboard to move the camera backwards. Left click to confirm that, and hit zero. On the numpad to go into the camera's view now with that done let's go ahead and hit shift a and search for the only two objects we're going to need in this entire scene believe it or not with the first one's going to be a plane um, and hit rx and then 90 on the numpad so you rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis then hit enter to confirm that hit s to scale it up and then hit s x to scale it on the uh, x-axis left click to confirm that and I can see we have this uh, this plane here which this is this is nice this is what we needed um, but the thing is is that we need to create another plane on top of this one so we can create the little you know double layer looking effect so the first thing I want to do is get all the materials and everything set up first so let's go to the render viewport shading up at the top right here you can see that click that little button up there go to the material uh, the material tab hit this little drop down select material and then go ahead and change this base color to a color that you want. I'm going to specifically do yellow because I see a lot of yellow um, in this type of motion graphic. And I think it looks really cool. So we'll do yellow. And yellow is also um, my favorite color. So let's go ahead and do yellow. Um, let's grab the world tab here. And we can change the color to a nice brighter color like that. Not, nothing that's solid white, but just a nice brighter color. Now this yellow is not the yellow that we chose because if we go to the main tab here, which is the output tab and then scroll the way down to uh wait no i'm sorry if we scroll if we go to the the first tab here which is the render properties tab and scroll the way down to color management it's on filmic so put that the standard and now you can see that is the yellow color that we chose um i do want to change the color a little bit more though make it fully bright and a little bit more saturated like that i suppose nice we can also make this a little bit brighter just a little tiny bit now if we go ahead and grab this plane here and it shift d and left click to cancel left sorry right click to cancel that movement um let's go ahead and grab this plane let's go ahead and grab this plane um there we go uh hit g y and move it just a little bit above the other plane so we have two planes now both of them are right here they're not exactly on top of each other but they're very very close now so that's what we need to see now let's go ahead and move this down i'm going to rotate it a bit as well so hit r y to rotate on the y axis like this Hit S to scale it up just a little bit so we can so we can scale it just a little tiny bit. Hit G and then move it to about like right here, somewhere in the center. Um, and as you can see, we have these two planes. One is overlapping each other, but you can't really tell because there's no shading. There's no shadows. So if we go to the Render Properties tab and then make sure that we have Ambient Occlusion checked, you can see it now puts a little shadow there, which is good. But I want to go ahead and make sure that this shadow is even darker than what it is. We have the distance. I'm going to put the distance up to 10. Um, and we can actually pull this back a little bit to about maybe there, hit G, Y, move back. So you can see that that now creates a nice little shadow there, which just looks really, really good. And it moves around. You can see it looks really, really cool. So the next thing I want to do, well, which is the final thing, I suppose, is I want to animate this. So let's go ahead and animate this. Um, let's go to, uh, we can do this. We'll just animate it. Um, let's go to the zero frame. So set our start frame to zero down here. Um, I'm going to pull this all the way down by hitting G and then double tapping Y um, or the G, hit G double tap Y move this all the way down off of the yellow plane hit I location and then on frame like 20 we'll hit G and then double tap Y again move it about right there and then hit the uh, I location hit the I key on your keyboard and then maybe frame 70 with G double tap Y again and move it about up to there. I don't want it to go all the way, but we'll just leave it right there. Hit I location and then on frame maybe 80 we'll end it off. So you can see it has an animation similar to this. 
which just looks really good. But the issue is, is that we don't have this set to 60 frames yet. So let's go ahead and change the frame rate in the second tab here, which is the output properties tab. Let's go ahead and make sure this says 60 frames. Or else it's going to look really, really choppy. So let me go ahead and take a look at that now. You can see it looks really, really good. I think it ends too quickly. Though. So let's put this on 120. There we go. Let's select our camera as well. Put the camera, go to the camera tab, and then go down to viewport display and make sure this is all the way up to one. So we can't see anything else that we don't need to be seeing. So as you can see, that is our motion graphic right there. Now, I want to do one more thing here, which is I want to um, duplicate this out. So like it, 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 we have multiple of these. So let's go ahead and um, hit uh, Shift D to duplicate this. Um, now, what we can do is actually before we do that, let's delete that. What we can do is we can add an axis to this or an empty so that we can move this without worrying about messing up the animation on the actual plane. So let's go ahead and hit Shift A and we'll search for a empty plane axis. Now let's go ahead and we can just leave it the, where it is, honestly. Um, you can put it in the center, you can move it to, to, to where it is, but let's go ahead and we can actually um, slap the cursor to the origin. So let's go ahead and go up to select this, the plane object, go up to object, um, hit set origin. Uh, what we can do, actually wait, we can snap, sorry, snap cursor to selected. There you go. So now the cursor is in the center of our plane. Then we can go ahead and hit, hit object. Um, and then we can snap this empty to cursor. So let's select it, select the empty right here that we just created this little axis, a little plus in the center of the screen. There you go. And then we can go ahead and go object snap, um, selected to cursor. So now it's down right on the center of the plane. Let's go ahead and select the plane, hold down shift and then select the axis, hit control P set parent to object. And now when we grab the axis, the empty, it now moves along with it. So let's go ahead and hold down shift, select both the axis and the plane, hit shift D to duplicate them, grab the axis, one of the axes, um, and then hit G and double tap Y, uh, G and just hit Y, sorry, wait, no, it's moving the wrong way. Um, there we go, we can't do it like that because it's gonna move it uh, the opposite direction because you can only move axes um, on the actual grid, you can't move them diagonally. Um, so let's, we have to move this by hand. So let's hit G, Y, G, X, sorry, move it over to the right, GZ, move it down a little bit like that. There you go. You can hit one on your um, numpad uh, to go to the front facing view, and we'll just move it over about, about right there. Unless we have to move it up a little bit as well, so it has a little shadow effect. So hit GY, move it up a little bit, somewhere about right there. And as you can see, when we go ahead and take a look at this, then it moves like that. But I want it to move after this first one moves. So let's go ahead and select this secondary plane. Um, click it, click and drag a box over top of all the keyframes and then hit G to move them up about 10 frames, maybe even more. You can see now it, it lags behind, which is exactly what I want. Uh, maybe even more than that, maybe 20 frames. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Nice. Cool. So there you go. That is our, um, that is our motion graphic of like uh, cool little planes. I, I don't even really know what to call it, but uh, nice, cool motion graphic background. You can have the motion graphic text come up. You can have something, whatever, what have you. But, um, but yeah, that is basically it. You can, of course, these all don't have to be same, the same color. You can change this into like a blue color or something else, like a gray color. That looks really good. Actually, I might leave it like that. But, um, but yeah, I just uh, decided to leave it as yellow because you can see the ambient occlusion much, much better. And you can definitely see the separation a lot easier. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.